been asked just to say at uh, the commencement of the service that the service can be listened to on the car radio, 87.6. So if you're outside, you can listen to the radio, sit in your car and listen to the radio. We're going to sing the first hymn here in the sheet. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Saviour all the day long. Now, if it's convenient for you, we'll stand to sing this hymn. Number one. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Heir of salvation, wretches of God, born of his spirit, washed in his just like to offer my sympathy to the Shannon family as a whole and the death of their mother and grandmother. You know, the, any deaths not nice in the home, but I think the death of her mother is more so sad because she seems to be there in the middle of the hub all the time. I can remember just over 50 years ago standing in the wee graveyard out there where we laid our mother to, to rest. Even to this very day, I think much of her. The words of wisdom that she spoke to us, encouragement she gave to us. I trust that as Annabelle is taken from the three girls here, that they too will find help and comfort, trust in the things of the past. And just to that you know, and that you know the peace of God in your lives. Psalm 46 and verse 3, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. 
So we pray that you will be able to put your trust in God's word and lead us and be guided by it. Shall we have a wee word of prayer? Our Father, in that ever worthy and precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son, we bow humbly and we bow reverently in thy presence to us now. We're glad we can come to thee. We're glad for this new and living way that has been opened up for us at Calvary, whereby sinners that have, re have uh, repented of their sin and trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, this way is opened up to them. We thank thee again for thy Son, ever leaving the glories of heaven, coming into the world to be despised and rejected and said it not. Our Father, we're thankful that nothing would turn him back from going to the cross. And there he suffered, he bled, he died alone. He died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good. We might go at last to heaven, saved by his precious blood. We're thankful for the memory of the one that we're gathered out to lay to rest just now. We ask our Father that thou would bless these memories to one and all. And we ask our Father that even this company that's gathered together here this evening, this afternoon, we pray that each one of us will ponder the path of our faith. Life is short, eternity is sure. Soon the place that knows us now will know us no more forever. And we trust that if there's any to hear that's not yet saved, doesn't know Isabel's, uh, Annabelle's Saviour, and even this very hour that they trust Christ as their Saviour, Know the peace, the joy of heaven as their eternal home, sins forgiven, and to be with Christ at the end of life's little journey. To this end, we leave ourselves with thee, asking for help from heaven, as thy word is opened and read to these people in other time. Pray that there'll be any given to you. Give help to the speaker, we pray. We just commend ourselves now to thy care. We have so much to thank thee for, even in the midst of death. Again, we pray for the girls, we pray for Eleanor, and we pray for Gloria, and we pray for all. Mm. Not forgetting Clive as well in the hospital, yeah. not very well at the moment. We yeah. pray that they would be near to them as they travel to and from, and that they would bless Clive as well. Leave ourselves now in thy care, giving thanks for all of thy kindness to us in the worthy, precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the first thing I have been asked to announce that, <clears throat> and the family have asked me to announce this, that there is a gospel meeting in this hall at 4 p.m. and the speaker is Dr. Lloyd Gilpin. And that meeting is only for half an hour and there is a cup of tea for everyone that can stay the meeting. I'm not sure why they've asked me to announce the meeting. Maybe they're afraid I'm going to continue longer than four o'clock. <laughs> now I would like today, on behalf of the large company that's gathered, I notice quite a crowd outside and people in their cars listening through the radio, and I'm sure there's online listeners right now listening the service. And I would like on behalf of all, and that includes my wife and my family, on behalf of the OE Assembly here in Ballykeel, to offer our sincere sympathy to the sorrowing family circle today. We feel for the three girls that have lost their mother, and she was a good mother, Eleanor, Olive, and Gloria. We think of their husbands, Keith, John, and George, grandchildren, Andrew, Andrea, Brian, Richard, Clive, Zara, and great-grandchildren, and two remaining sisters, Dorothy and Orma. I was told that Annabelle really loved her grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and they really loved her too. We want to remember Clive today, unable to attend his Nana's funeral as he is still in Craigavon area hospital. And if you're seeing, please pray for Clive. I pray for him continually, and I pray that soon he'll be restored to a full measure of health and strength, 
and his mother and father would have the joy of having him back home again. Now, I'm going to say a few words about Annabelle. I've been asked to read this out, to read this short tribute. I can't cover everything about Annabelle. There's so much I could say about her. We could take half an hour talking about Annabelle. She was one of the kindest women I ever met. I was noticing yesterday, speaking to different people in Kilkeel, and they told me how kind she was. And there was times they were in need, and she met their need, gave them food and clothes and whatever, but she didn't want anyone to know that. And God has taken note of that and will reward her for that at the judgment seat of Christ. Annabelle was the daughter of James and Mary Meher. She was the fourth child in a family of five, one brother and three sisters, Willie, Winnie, Dorothy, Annabelle, and Orma. Annabelle's brother Willie served in the Royal Air Force and was killed at the age of 19. Annabelle was taken to Mourn Presbyterian Church, and from a young age she was brought up under the sound of the gospel. She attended Glenlochan Primary School and then to Kilkeel Technical College. Hudson and Annabelle met, went out together and got married. God blessed them with a son and three daughters, Jim, Elner, Olive and Gloria. Hudson, Annabelle and the family ran a very successful guest house. Over the years, the, the Shannon family worked very hard. At one stage, Annabelle did wedding receptions and weekend parties for the local churches and other churches. We are thankful to have a couple today from Limavady here that spent their honeymoon at Moorn Abbey in the 1970s. One of the former school principals of Kilkeel High School, when he first came into this area, stayed in the guest house and for several months and often spoke of the kindness shown to him. And he spoke to me as well of those happy days that he spent at Moorn Abbey guest house. In 1957, Hudson and Annabelle attended gospel meetings in this area. Annabelle got saved first and then Hudson. Sometime later, they were both baptized and were added to a local assembly. Our sister had the joy of seeing her children all saved. On the 20th of February, 2017, Jim went home to heaven. And this was a big trial for Annabelle and his sisters. Annabelle loved to spend time on holidays with her three sisters. Our sister had a good life and was a blessing to so many. Her seat is now empty and she will be missed. But we rejoice she has gone to a place where there are no more tears or trials. The family asked me to thank Monadara Care, Mourn Family Surgery, Daisy Hill Hospital, and especially the staff of Ward 22. I would like, along with others, to acknowledge the kindness and the care that Elner, Olive, and Gloria showed to their mother over the years. Now, there's a lot more, as I said, could be said, but that we are going to let it go at that. As soon as this funeral is over, Olive and John is leaving Sharp to go to Craig Avon Area Hospital, and we pray God's blessing upon them as they leave. Some time ago, I was speaking to Annabelle, and she said, I want you to do something, Jonathan. I want you to speak at my funeral. I remember saying, tell her, I said, Annabelle, you could be making the tea at mine. <laughs> but the Lord has seen it fit to call our beloved sister home. And I'm going to try and carry out her dying request. 
I want to read today from Psalm number 40. I was with Annabelle a fortnight ago yesterday. And if you visit in the Moore Abbey home, you were expected to read the word of God and pray. <laughs> Funny, I was listening recently to Harold Paisley, a preacher, and he said that his mother was dying and there was two elders come to visit her in the hospital. And they talked to her and they headed for the door. They were going home and she shouted, come back, man, come back. She says, if you don't know to do it, I'm going to do it with you. Just stand there till I pray. And she prayed. So that was a wee bit like more than Abbey. They like to hear the scriptures read. And they love to hear you speak to God in prayer. Psalm number 40. And we're going to read the first ver four verses. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Now along with those four verses, I want to take two other readings, and the next reading is in John chapter 14. The Gospel according to John in chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye you know, and the way, ye you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And the final reading is in Philippians. Philippians and chapter 3, and I'm just going to read the one verse, the last verse of the chapter. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Now that's all I intend to read, and the Lord has promised to bless the public reading of his precious word. As I've said, Annabelle's death come very quick. It was unexpected. Two weeks ago when I was with her, I, did, I, I, I honestly thought Annabelle would be with us for quite some time. But here we are today at our funeral service, and these three passages has been on my mind. And I want to speak on new things. I want to speak on a new song. And then I'm going to speak on a new home. And then I'm going to speak on a new body. So you'll be fit to remember my three wee headings leaving the funeral today. A new song. A new home. And a new body. You'll notice here, I have read from Psalm 40 and the da David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, he's looking back on an experience that he has had. And there's four things I just want to mention sitting on the surface of these verses. We have his state or the situation he was in. The second thing, his supplication. And then we have his standing, he's on a rock. And then we have his soul, his state or his situation. Here we have a man and he's in a pit and he's in the miry clay and he's sinking. And you know, many a time I talked, about, I talked to Annabelle and she talked about her past and she was in her sins and she was miserable and she feared eternity and she felt helpless. She couldn't do a thing to save herself. 
And then, alas, the time come when she got her eye off herself and she got it onto the Lord and she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as her own and personal Savior. But here you are today. Just think about your sin. I have sinned. And it's your sin, it's your own personal sin that God has on record. And it's your sin that will keep you out of heaven because heaven's a holy place and not that defileth, not that defileth shall ever enter therein. You see, you need to get your sins forgiven. And it's only Christ that has power to forgive your sins. So here you are today. If I want to be in heaven, I need to get my sins forgiven. And you're sinking and you're in danger and time's running out. And here's a man in an awful plight. And he's powerless all around him. There's no help near him. He needs help. And David discovered, and so did Mrs. Shannon, I need help from above. I need somebody that's not in the pit. Have you ever discovered that yet? I can't save myself. I need help from above. I need help from God. And I'm glad to tell you, that the God that I represent this evening is a God that's interested in helping you. And he loves you. And he gave his one and only son. And he put him to grief on the cross that you, a guilty sinner, might be free. Let us get to the cross for a wee minute or two. Annabelle loved me reading for about the cross to her. Now, what about the cross? You see, God had only one son. He sent him into the world. He was sinless. But he made his way out to Calvary and he suffered on a cross for six hours. And whenever he was suffering on the cross, he was suffering for my sins. He was suffering that I would never perish. Is that not good news today? We have invited you people into this hall this afternoon. Why? Because we have good news. If you want to meet Annabelle Shannon in glory, you can because Christ died for you on the cross. Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree. The Lord led on him. Now, I want you to get it. A holy God in heaven, he punished his son on the cross for your sins, for my sins, and for the sins of the whole world. And you can go free today by doing what? Acknowledging your sin and accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal Savior. So I trust I've got the wee point across. There's a Savior, and he really loves you. And he wants to be your Savior. And he's knocking on your heart's door today. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. You see, there's no question about it. He does want to save you. And he has made a promise that if you ask him in, he will come in. And I trust if you haven't already accepted Christ as your savior, you will do so today. So here's a man, and he needed help from the Lord. And what did he do? He says, someone, I, I, I want to know how to be saved. It says here, he waited patiently on the Lord. His supplication. He put his request in, his plea. I think of the dying thief so long ago. He says, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And what did the Savior say to him? He says, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. You see, I want you to get the picture. There was a plea went out, and there was a promise come back. And if you put the plea out today, he gives you a promise. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So the Lord heard his call. He lifted him up, and he put his feet on a rock. And that brings me to the new standing. Another hymn that Annabelle loved to sing was, My hope is built on nothing less Than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest free, But wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. I think of another verse of that hymn, and it says, When all around my soul gives way, he then 
is all my hope and strength. What have I got for eternity? I have Christ. What want I more? But then we come to the song. He put a new song in my mouth. Now, if you're working with someone and they're singing, well, what do you know? What do I know about that person? I know he's happy and he's singing or humming. Well, that was true, Annabelle. There was always, there, there was always happiness for Annabelle. I was at her home so many times. I remember well going to the home a few hours after she had buried Jim. And you know, there was no tears. And I said to myself, there's a woman of strong faith. You see, Annabelle had put the telescope to the eye and she knew it's better on before. I've only a few more trials and then it's glory at last. Her song, what was her song? She loved the sing of the Lord who died. I'm going to tell you a wee story before I go any further. There was a missionary, he went out to preach the gospel to people and he decided he would call the children round him and he started to sing courses to the children. And one of them was, Jesus loves me, this I know. He, and the children kept shouting at him, sing another one, sing another one. And he sung about 10, he was tired. And they were shouting, sing another one. He says, no, you sing me something back. And this wee girl shouted, she says, but I have nothing to sing about. See, the point was this. There the missionary had the Lord to sing about. And the wee girl had never come in contact with the Lord as yet. And there uh, she had nothing to sing about. I want to come quickly to my next reading, John 14. And I've read about the Savior. He says, he's going away. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So he's away to prepare a place. And he called Annabelle to that place the other day, at home with the Lord. That's where she is now. You know, if I'm on holiday, I'm always thinking of home. Last year I went to Wales. As soon as I got off the boat, I phoned home. And all I could think about was home, home, home. I, I don't like being away from home. And that was true of Annabelle. She, she was longing to get home to heaven. She had a big longing, and God has called her home. But this home, and I was just contrasting the two homes, her last home and her new home. You see, more than I, it was a happy home. I was telling the girls the other night about a certain preacher that came into this area, and he preached for weeks on end here. And he told me leaving, he says, I've been in so many homes. But he says, do you know the happiest home I have ever been in? I said, where? He says, in Hudson Shannon's home. See, there was happiness there. And the girls was there. And, S and Jim was there. What was the secret of the happiness in the home? Because Hudson Shannon and Annabelle Shannon they always give the Lord his place and they always give him his portion. I remember as a little boy, someone said to me yesterday, when did you first know Annabelle? I couldn't answer that. I've known Annabelle all my life and I was never allowed to call her Mrs. Shannon to her face. But anyway, one of my first memories of Moore Abbey, I went in with my father and I took him by the hand we were walking around the farmyard after Hudson and Daddy says, look, I have to go now. No, you're not going. You're coming into the house. Everybody had to be took to the house. And then you went over to the house to see Annabelle. And you had to stay for tea. And I wasn't very old. And I said to myself, there's a man like you, Dad. He gives thanks for his food. And you know, there, more than Abbey was a home where there was a man and woman. And they give thanks for their food continually. And Hudson Shannon was a praying man. He was a man who knew his Bible. He come out here to the Bible reading and we appreciated his visits.
But you know, I just want to get the point across today. The secret of Moran Abbey home was the Lord. The Lord made all the difference. The fear of God is in that home. Well, there's something else I must mention is hospitality. You know, there was different preachers that stayed in this area. Ministers, pastors, they all went to Moore Abbey. And Mrs. Shannon fed them like kings, not like servants, but like kings. It was a helpful home. It was a huge home. We could go on talking about the home. But I want to come to look at the new home that Annabelle has went to. It's a prepared place for a prepared people. If you want to meet Annabelle again, you need to prepare. It's a perfect place. No sin up there. There's a people already there. There's a person there, and he's preeminent in that place, and it's the Lord. There's praise in it. It's permanent. We sometimes sing, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we'll have no less days to sing God's praises than when we first begun. But could I say something else before I leave it? That home, there's a passport to it. And do you know what it is? The cross of Christ is all my boast. His blood my only plea. My passport to the realms of bliss is Jesus died for me. Let us get to the point today. How do we know Annabelle is in heaven? How am I so sure she's in heaven? Because Jesus died for me. Annabelle was a praying woman. Annabelle was a godly woman. But that didn't fit her for heaven. Annabelle went to heaven because Jesus died died for me. You might say, well, I, I pray and I preach and I praise and surely that should get me to heaven. There's one thing I'll get you to heaven and it's four words. Jesus died for me. I'm going to leave it. I don't want to continue too long. I come to my last point. We've thought of a new song that Annabelle got at conversion. We've thought of a new home that Annabelle arrived into on Thursday night late past. What about a new body that she's going to get? You see, her body had got weak. And on Thursday past, the soul left the body. She just threw the body off, the old cloak. And she went out to eternity. And she went home to heaven. Is that the end? No. We're burying a body. And these are precious remains that lie in front of the platform today. And we're going to take them out and lower them into a grave. And the grave will be carefully closed. And these remains will sit in the earth until the coming again of the Lord Jesus. And he's coming back. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up in the air to be forever with the Lord. But just, I want to say four things about the new body and I'll, I'll let it go at this. Annabelle is going to get a new body when the Lord comes again. It's going to be an imperishable body. It's going to be a glorious body. It's going to be a powerful body. And it's going to be a spiritual body. Imperishable. Never grows old. It never becomes sick. It's always healthy and it's strong forever. What about the glorious side of it? The glorious side of the body. It's going to shine. And <clears throat> he's going to give us perfect body. Bodies like unto his own body. And thus the Savior is going to do that. A powerful body. A strong, the strength in that body. I was reading last night about the men in a certain room. And the Savior appeared to them. And the doors weren't even opened at all. How did, they, how did the Savior get in? You see, 
We'll be able to do things in our new body that we could never do in these old bodies. A man said to me recently, he says, do you believe we'll know each other in heaven? I says, do you think I'm going to be more limited in heaven than I am down here on earth? I'm going to meet Annabella again in glory, and I'm going to see her face to face, and I'll know her. I will recognize her again in the glory. A spiritual body. You see, these old bodies of ours today, they are affected by sin. But Annabelle Shannon is going to get a body that is spiritual and she'll have no more wrong thoughts or any problems or anything like that. We look forward to that coming day. May God bless his word. I, ru I have run through it very quickly, but I trust you would even take the three simple thoughts away from the funeral. A new soul, a new home, and a new body. Now we're going to close in prayer. <coughs> our God and our Father in heaven, we bow again and we come to thee. Through the precious and worthy name of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We do come to give thee our thanks now for the blessings of this day so far. We thank thee for the hope that thou hast given to us. We would be here today sorrowing without hope had it not been for divine intervention. God parted with his son, sent him into the world. We think of Abraham and Isaac, and thou didst intervene, and thou didst not let uh, Isaac die on the altar. There was divine intervention there, but we know that thou didst not divine, that thou didst not intervene at Calvary. Thou didst let thy son go through the sufferings, and he suffered it all for a guilty hell deserving sinner like me. We praise thee today for a work that's finished, for precious blood shed. The Savior died and was buried, and he lives now in the power of an endless life. He's gone away, but not to stay. He's coming back to take us to be forever with himself. But here we are gathered at this funeral service, and we pray for Elmer. We pray for Gloria and Olive. And we think of the husbands and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We especially feel for Clive today. We'd love to be at this funeral, Lord. Thou dost know all that's gone through his mind even right now. We're thankful that he was so good to his granny. His granny really loved him. And we pray that Clive will be brought through this illness. And his life will be spared. And he'll live to be a man of God. We just pray now that thou wouldst Remember us as we leave the hall. We make our way out to the grave and we lower the body into the grave and commit it to the earth and pray and leave and go our different ways. We pray that God will comfort not only this afternoon but in the days to come. And we vow to thank thee for the memory of Annabelle. We thank thee for the memory of Hudson and Annabelle and Jim. Those were happy days when they were all around Morn Abbey. Thou hast seen fit to claim them to glory. We pray that thou wilt guide the family in decisions they have to make in the future. And help, we pray. And we pray for every person that's at this funeral today, that they will be blessed. If there's anyone that's listening to us today and they're not a Christian, we pray that they will acknowledge their sin. They'll repent of their sin. And they'll put their faith in thy beloved son. Do save a soul as a result of Annabelle's passing and help us now as we go to the grave and we ask all in the Lord's name. Amen. Now our brother Michael has passed me a wee note to say ask the congregation to stand while we're singing the closing hymn and just watch your seat might be removed while you're standing so you could maybe sit down in no seat there. We're going to sing the last hymn on our sheet. There is coming a day when no heartaches shall come no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace evermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. So we'll stand and sing and Michael will present this hymn again. There 